Can we have the bill, please? It's okay, Grandma. I'd like to pay for this. Hang on. What did you just do? Did you pay by bank card? No, I didn't. I paid with my watch. But sometimes I pay with my phone. Really? How did you pay for things when you were young? Did you use cash? Yes, I did. I didn't have a phone then, and a watch was for telling the time. What a fantastic photo! I know. I found it in a cupboard in the living room last week. It's my great grandparents, Tom and Edith, on their wedding day. And look, it says London, the 17th of June, 1946, on the back. Do you know much about Tom and Edith? I do now. I chatted to my grandfather, Billy, on the phone and he told me some interesting things. He was born in London in 1947 and he said life wasn't easy for them in the 1950s. So his parents decided to start a new life in Australia. Really? Yeah. According to Billy, it wasn't unusual. More than one million British people went to Australia in the 50s and 60s to find a better life. They travelled by boat, and Billy remembers it well. They left the UK in September 1958 and arrived in Australia six weeks later. Was it expensive? Well, I went online and found out that it usually cost £120 to travel there by ship. But for people like Tom and Edith, who wanted to go and live in Australia, it only cost £10 each. That's amazing! Anyway, Billy said the family loved their new life in Australia. It was warmer and they had more money. When Billy was 13, he bought a camera, not a digital camera like people have today, and he started taking photos. He was talented and became a photographer when he finished school. He didn't stay in Australia all his life. He came back to the UK in 1980. A different kind of holiday. Two months ago, I began to think that I had a problem. I needed to study for some important exams, but I found it difficult to work. Why? I couldn't leave my phone for more than 15 minutes. One of my teachers believes that it's more difficult for students today to work hard and remember facts. It's because they can't stop thinking about phones and social media, he said. So, I decided to go on a digital detox camp for teenagers. I was stressed at first because I wanted to check my messages. Nightmare! But all my devices were at home, so I slowly relaxed during the three days. In the end, I had a brilliant time. We did lots of outdoor activities, chatted face to face and laughed a lot. Without my phone, I started to see the things around me like trees and flowers. I spent time taking photos, but not with my phone. I'm home now, so I'm using digital devices again, but I'm using them in a different way. I turn my phone off at 9pm and turn it on 11 hours later. And I only go online for an hour a day. I feel great and I'm a better student. How can I help you? Have you got anything cheaper? How much is it? How would you like to pay? Can I pay in cash? Do you want a bag? 
You know the big dreams you had when you were younger about what life is like as a teenager? You mean dreams that don't always become true? Yeah, I guess. But all kids dream about what they're going to be like when they're older. And we often think that life is going to be totally amazing. But that's not always true. So what is it really like to be 16 or 17? Well, we are. And it's not so exciting. <laughs> As a kid, my dreams were big. I thought that teenagers spent all their time with their friends going out. But in real life, it isn't like that at all. When I'm not at school or exercising, I'm at the library studying so I can go to college and then go to university. While I'm there, I often start dreaming about how I'm going to share a house with other students, learn to cook, get a degree in business and work for an international company. I want to become a top manager. It's good to dream big, right? <laughs> when I was younger, I thought that all YouTubers immediately became rich. At 14, I wanted to earn a lot of money from my videos. I told everyone I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 16. I'm going to have an expensive car and a driver, and I'm going to become famous. But in reality, my first video got 25 likes, and I'm not famous at all. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Now I'm a bit more realistic. I'm working hard to save money for university, I want to go to drama school and become an actor. Oh, and I want to learn to drive. I'm not going to get a driver any time soon. <laughs> we had very big dreams as kids, but I think that's a good thing. Sure, not all our dreams came true, but we're still young. And we've got an awesome vlog. And we make some money from it. I think we're living the dream. <laughs> yeah, me too. What about you? Why don't you share some of your dreams with us? And please give us a like or comment so we can keep dreaming big. See you guys soon. Bye. Lara? Lara! Huh? Oh, hi Kevin. Sorry. I'm just trying to think of ways to earn some money. Are you going to buy a new laptop or something? No, I'm not, Gina. <laughs> I know my laptop's old, but it works perfectly. I'm not going to get a new one any time soon. So, why do you want to save money then? For drama school, Dan. It's really expensive, but it's my dream to become an actor. One way to earn money is to give lessons at weekends. What about technology lessons? I'm not a computer expert like you, Kevin. You don't need to design websites, Lara. Just show people how to do some things online. You know, my brother earns money buying and selling old devices. It's good for him because he wants to do a degree in business. Hmm, I'm not sure about that, Gina. I know. Why not become a YouTuber? You can make really cool videos. YouTubers earn a lot of money when they get thousands of likes. <laughs> that isn't a bad idea, Dan. Dream big, Lara. You're going to become famous before you even go to drama school. Oh, no. We've got maths now. Ugh. Aww. 
Let's listen to this podcast about dream jobs. I think it'll be interesting. No, it won't. It sounds boring, and I know what my dream job is: to be a lawyer. Really? How long will that take you? About six years. I won't be a lawyer any time soon. Well, I don't think I'll go to university immediately after finishing school. Will you go travelling first? Yes, I will, and I think I'll work as a guide somewhere, like in New Zealand. What skills do you need to have to invent things? You need to be good at imagining new ways to do things. Where do your ideas come from? When I see problems around me, I want to solve them. At the moment, I'm designing a device to make visiting hospitals more fun for young children like my brother Max. He's got problems with his health. How will people find out about your project? I'm going to enter it in the Big Bang competition next year. It's for young people aged 11 to 18 across the UK with a STEM project. That's science, technology, engineering, or maths. Do you think you'll win? I always dream big. So I hope I'll become the young engineer of the year. Are there any young people you admire? Elif Bilgin from Turkey. She was only sixteen when she created a way to use banana skins to make a type of plastic. This plastic is better for the natural world than traditional plastic. This could help solve the problem of plastic pollution. What about your future? I'll get a degree from a top university like Imperial College London. I hope I'll work for the United Nations one day. I want to help solve problems around the world, and I'll never stop designing things. I'd like you to compare two of the photos and say what's good about doing these activities. I'm going to talk about these two photos. In the first photo, I can see some students. They're in a science class and they're doing an experiment. In the second photo, there's one student and she's studying in the school library. She's using books and a laptop, so. She's probably doing her homework or doing some research. Both photos show students working. The first photo shows students working together, but the second one shows someone working on her own. In my opinion, both activities are good. It's good to work in a team and solve problems together. It's also good to work alone. I think you can work faster like this. Hey Marie, are you going to go to the careers event at school next month? Originally, it was on Friday and Saturday, but now I think it's just on Saturday. Oh yeah, that's right. My drama teacher told me about it. Who are you going to go with? Well, I asked my friend Priya, but she's busy, so my sister's going to come. She's younger than me, but she's interested in drama too. Is that what you're going to study at university? Drama? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to a drama school in London. I want to be an actor. Film. Actually, I saw some amazing street theater at the Edinburgh Festival last summer. I want to do something like that. How about you? Do you know what you're going to do?、Mm, not really. What subjects do you like best? Well, I like chemistry, but I don't think I want to study that at university. I mean, I don't want to be a doctor or anything. 
I think I'll get a job for a year and decide after that. That's a good idea. You can save some money. I want to do that, but I'm so busy with the school play. I'm going to look for a job next summer. I'll probably work in a supermarket or something. My friend worked there last year before she went to Spain. Then she worked as a guide. That sounds good. I'd like to do something like that. Will she be at the careers event too? It would be good to chat to her. Yeah, I think she'll probably be there. But I could phone her later and ask. Then you can talk to her there. Thanks, Marie. That's great. Fantastic. I'll call you later too. Hi all, another school year is almost over and our summer holidays are going to start very soon. But where to go? We asked two other vloggers called Dan and Lily. They're brother and sister, like us. They've travelled to all kinds of exciting places and today they're going to tell us a bit about their favourite holidays and city breaks. So, over to you, Dan and Lily. Hey guys! That's right, we love talking about travel. So, here are our favourite places. My favourite was our holiday to Buenos Aires. It was incredible. Apart from the journey, that is. We went there by plane and the flight was over 13 hours. Ugh. But when we got there, everything was amazing. Buenos Aires has got excellent public transport, including an underground system, trams and buses that run from early in the morning until late at night. So it's really easy to see all the sights. We also went on this brilliant walking tour where we saw areas like La Boca. We saw the famous football stadium. And then we went to Palermo. There were lots of fantastic shops and restaurants. And all this on foot. For four hours. <laughs> I was so hungry. I ate lots of empanadas. I needed the energy. They were delicious. OK, now it's my turn. We have visited a lot of places in Europe on city breaks too. Places like Paris, Berlin and Vienna. Actually, when we were in Vienna, we also went on a day trip to Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. It's a really easy journey and you can go by car, coach or train. But we chose a boat trip down the river Danube. OK, it was the slowest form of transport, but it was also the most beautiful journey. Once we arrived in the city, we went by taxi to the Kamzik TV Tower. That was one of my favourite experiences of the whole trip. It's nearly 200 metres high and it's on a hill, so it's got amazing views. On a good day, you can even see the Czech Republic, Austria and Hungary too. Yeah, that was a great trip. Thanks, Dan and Lily. Those cities sound amazing. I haven't been to any of them, but now I really want to go. What about you, Callum? What's your favourite city? Uh... Edinburgh, of course. It's the best city in the world. But now we want to hear all about your favourite city breaks. Where do you think we should go? <laughs> That's right. 
Tell us where you've been or give us your suggestions in the comments. But that's it from us, so see you next time. Bye. I love getting around my hometown by motorbike. It's more fun than driving a car. And I've always wanted to have a big adventure before I go to university. That's why I decided to get on a motorbike and do an exciting trip across the USA on Route 66. I've seen this famous road in films and read about it in books. It starts in Chicago and finishes in Los Angeles, 2,400 miles away. I flew from London to Chicago at the beginning of July. Chicago's an interesting city, so I spent three days looking around the sites. Then, early one morning, I got a motorbike and set off alone on Route 66. Some people try to do the journey as quickly as possible, but I wanted to do it slowly. There are some incredible views to stop and look at. It was fun driving the motorbike every day, but I was happy to get off it every evening and check into a motel for the night. Anyway, here I am in Los Angeles on the other side of the country. I've been through eight different states and driven through all kinds of weather. The journey has taken me 19 days and, amazingly, the motorbike hasn't broken down once. So, where to go now? Home, I guess. I don't really want my adventure to finish, but it's time to go back to the UK. In fact, my flight takes off in three hours. Have you ever eaten Indonesian food? No, I haven't. I've never been to Indonesia. What about you? I haven't been to Indonesia, but I've eaten an Indonesian rice dish called nasi goreng. My dad cooks it. Really? Has he ever been to Indonesia? Yes, he has. He's travelled a lot. Oh, which countries has he visited? I don't know exactly but more than 20. Have you ever been camping? Yes, I have. I really like it. What about you? No, I haven't. But my sister is camping now. Where has she gone? To a big music festival. Wow! Has she ever been before? No, she hasn't. And it's the first time she slept in a tent, too. Ellie, a young travel photographer, tells her story. Taking photos hasn't always been my dream. As a child, my hobby was drawing, and I actually wanted to be a fashion designer. Then, when I was 14, a travel photographer gave a presentation at my school. I found his photos beautiful, so I started taking photos with my mum's camera. People thought my pictures were great, so I soon realised that it was more than just a hobby. I saved money for a really good digital camera and I had some photography lessons. A friend designed a website for me, so now people can see my work online. You need to be a certain character to be a good travel photographer. I've always been patient and it helps when you're waiting for the right photo. It also helps to be brave, so you can discover places far from all-inclusive resorts. Travel photography is a bit like an adventure holiday. In Tenerife, for example, I've packed water, sun cream and my camera and gone on foot to the top of a volcano. The views of the Canary Islands from the top of Mount Teide were incredible. Being a travel photographer is important for different reasons. It's a way to see the world and explore different cultures and traditions. I want my photos to educate people. I want them to be a window on the world. 
Castle Guest House. Can I help you? Hello. We're looking for a place to stay in Edinburgh. I'd like some information about the Castle Guest House. Certainly. What would you like to know? Where exactly are you in Edinburgh? We're in the old town, not far from all the sites. You can go everywhere on foot. How far is it from the airport? It's really easy to get here from the airport. There's a tram every fifteen minutes, and the journey takes half an hour. How much is a room with twin beds? It's fifty-five pounds a night. Have you got any rooms free on the sixth of July for three nights? Yes, we have. Okay. Do you arrange tours? No, we don't. But you can book tours at the tourist office near the guest house. Great. Thanks for your help. Good afternoon. I'm Jenny Scott, and this is Philip Smith. He's here to listen to us. Now, what's your name? I'm Rodrigo. Thank you. And what's your name? My name's Tomek. Thank you, Rodrigo. What's your surname? Sequeira. How do you spell it? S, E, Q, U, E, I, R, A. Thank you, Rodrigo. Tomek, what's your surname? Novak. How do you spell it? N O W A K. Thank you, Tomek. Stop. Take off your sunglasses, please. Is this your yellow bag? Yes, it is. Open it, please. What's in this purple box? Is it a mobile phone? No, that's an old video game. Are these your keys? Yes, they are. And what are these? Those are my headphones, and that's my new mobile phone. Take out your mobile phone, please. And these orange books? Those are my diaries. This is slow. Can I go? Not so fast. What's this blue thing? That's an umbrella. Don't take umbrellas into the stadium. Okay. That's it. <sighs> Thanks. Bye. Wait. Don't forget your bag, sir. Hi, guys. I'm Zara. And I'm her brother, Callum. I'm seventeen years old. And I'm sixteen. We're from Edinburgh, the Scottish capital. And this is our awesome vlog. Born in Scotland. We make all kinds of vlogs about all kinds of topics, but a lot of the time we just vlog about our day. These daily vlogs are really popular. Lots of you want to know how we do it, so you can do it too. So. Here are the top five secrets to our success. These are the steps we take to achieve our goal and make fun vlogs about our day. Step one is get up early. I know, I know, but we both think it's a great time to vlog. I get up around seven, but. I get up around six. I have a shower. I brush my teeth. I get dressed, and then I vlog for around ten to fifteen minutes.
Then it's time for step two. Start your vlog. You can start like this. Good morning, guys. How are you? It's another amazing day for another amazing vlog. Or like this. Hey, it's Callum. It's my vlog, and it's very, very cool. But don't worry about it. Just do what's natural. Then, once you start the vlog, it's time for step three. Talk about your day, like this. First, I have breakfast. Then. I take the bus to school, and at half past twelve, I have lunch, and after lunch, I have guitar lessons. Then I go home, and then it's time for step four: vlog in the evening. You can vlog about everything. So why not vlog after your homework, like this? Hi guys, here we go. It's homework time. Just do your homework, Callum. Ugh. Vlog when you have dinner. Mmm, this is delicious. Eat your dinner, Callum. Vlog when you relax and listen to music. I love this song. <laughs> and vlog when you watch TV. Let's see what's on. No TV, Callum. We vlog all day. It isn't always easy. But that's the secret to a great daily vlog. And before we go to bed, it's time for step five. Finish your video. Why not try something like this? Later, guys. Or this. See you next time, my friends. Or just this. Bye. And that's it. Nice one, Callum. <laughs> Thanks, Zara. All you need to do now is edit your video, watch it, and put it online. But that isn't always easy. You need to take your time. But it's good to do it. So, congratulations. You're now a vlogger, like us. So that's it from us. One more time, Callum. Bye. See you next time. My typical day. I get up at seven thirty a.m. Then I have a shower and brush my hair and my teeth. My family and I have breakfast together in the kitchen. I eat toast. Then my brother and I go to school. We take the bus because our school is fifteen kilometers away. On the bus in the mornings, we relax and watch videos on our phones. At school, we have lessons until three thirty p.m. And then we go home at 3:45 p.m. My school friends and I often do our homework on the bus before we get home. Sam. Hi guys, I'm Sam. I buy clothes with the money from my vlog. Then I get dressed in the clothes, and I talk about fashion in my videos. I only make one video a week because I'm busy with school. Like most people in Mumbai, I get up early.
My family and I have breakfast, and Mum and Dad go to work at eleven a.m. But I have lessons at half past eight. After school, I go home, and I can't relax because I do my homework for three hours. Lucas and Hannah. Hi there, I'm Lucas. I'm sixteen, and this is my sister Hannah. Hi, I'm sixteen too. Lucas and I have got a daily vlog. We play video games together. It's fun. Yes, but I'm tired, and I want to spend more time with my friends. My best friend finishes school. Goes home, listens to music, or goes out, but I can't see him because we make videos every day. That's true. Our weekends are busy too. On Saturdays we edit videos, and on Sundays we do our homework. Demi. Hey, I'm Demi. Lots of people want to become vloggers. They think it's easy. In my videos, I put on makeup, I brush my teeth and hair, and I talk about beauty products. I do this nearly every day because two million people watch my videos. I've got lots of money, and that's good. But the problem is that I work all the time. I never relax when I take the bus or have dinner in my hometown because everybody takes photos of me. I like vlogging, but I want some free time too. Tom. Hi, I'm Tom, and my cousin Megan lives in Cape Town. Megan plays the guitar in her vlog. And people have guitar lessons with her online. She gets up late, has lunch, has a shower, gets dressed in jeans and a t-shirt, and then she makes videos all afternoon. She loves vlogging, but some people write horrible comments. For example, they say, "You can't play the guitar well," or. I hate your music. This is why I haven't got a vlog. The music school party is on the fourteenth of October at five o'clock. Are you free then, Nico? Oh no, Zoe, I'm not. All I do is study, study, study. I have classes on Mondays to Fridays. Then I go home at half past five. I do my homework. I have dinner, and I study again until midnight. I'm sorry, but I haven't got time. I understand, Nico. You need to manage your time so you can study and relax on school days. A plan of all the things you do in the week can help you. I'm not the type of person who writes a plan. It's easy, Nico. On Sunday evenings, you make a list of things you need to do in the week, like homework. Then you decide the number of hours to spend on each activity. But before you do that, you need to know how much time you spend on the things you do every day. Write down all the daily activities that you do in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. See how many hours you spend on them. So, Paul, I even count the minutes I take to get dressed, brush my teeth, and have breakfast every day. Yes, that's right. Why not write it in a diary or on your mobile phone? Bill Gates plans every minute of his day. Really, Zoe? Even at the weekend? Um, 
Probably just on weekdays, Nico. And when I've got lots of homework or a big project, I break it into small tasks. And I always have study breaks. Oh, that's interesting. I have a break every two hours when my phone rings, like this. Then I relax for 15 minutes. I watch a video or I have a snack and a drink. After that, I study again. And on weekdays, I follow the same routine every day. I go to bed and get up at the same time every day. And I have a hot shower at night. It helps me sleep. Thanks, Paul. Actually, guys, this is really good advice. The music school party is on the 14th of October. I go home at half past five. On Sunday evenings, you make a list of the things you need to do in the week. I have extra classes on Tuesdays. Write down all the things you do in the morning. I have a hot shower at night. You can study and relax on school days. I really like sport. I love going for a run. I go to the park every weekend. I go with my brother. He doesn't like running. He rides his bike. I don't ride with him because I can't ride a bike. I've got a PlayStation and a TV in my room. When I come home from school, I play video games with my brother. I really like board games too. I play them with my family and also with my friends. I haven't got many hobbies, really. I read a lot of comics. I don't read many books. I think books are boring. I love music and I listen to songs on the bus every morning. I like rock and pop. Look, Sam. It's the timetable for this year's after-school activities. Great! Do you want to do homework in the library with me, Layla? No, thanks. I like studying at home. Are there any interesting clubs we can do together? Um, what about cooking club? I love making pizzas. Really? I don't. I hate cooking. What else is there? Oh, I don't really like gaming, but you do. Yes, I do. I enjoy playing computer games, but I can't stand playing board games. Me neither. And I don't like orchestra or band because I don't play any instruments. Neither do I. Book club sounds boring. I don't like reading. Really? I do. What about Italian lessons? Parliamo Italiano? <laughs> uh, no thanks. I don't really like speaking languages. Do you like doing sport? Yes, I do. I love going for a run and playing football. Me too. Well, why don't we go to sports club then? Yeah, good idea. But I don't want to go twice a week. I'm too busy. Me too. Do you prefer Tuesdays or Fridays? Um, well, I have maths lessons on Tuesdays after school. So, I prefer Friday. Great! Friday it is, then. I love cooking. So do I. 
Do you like making cakes? Yes, I do. I love it. But I really don't like tidying the kitchen at the end. Me neither. It's boring. I like drawing comics. Really? I don't. I don't enjoy school art classes. Neither do I. And I don't like science. Really? I do. Do you hate maths too? No, I don't. It's great. Hi, guys. Hello. Today's vlog is about fitness. Of course, I am a real athlete. I play football twice a week and I go skateboarding every Saturday, so I'm pretty fit. But Zara, you like sport, don't you? <laughs> As Callum knows, I am crazy about sport. What sports do you play? I usually play tennis once a week, and I often play volleyball too. I'm on the school team for both. I go swimming three times a week, and I often practice my diving too. I love adventure sports too. In the winter, I go snowboarding, and in the summer, I love surfing and windsurfing. Oh, and I go to dance classes on Thursdays, but that's just for fun. It's a busy life, and keeping fit is really important to me. But do you know what? I hardly ever go to the gym. I do short workouts instead. They're only around five minutes, but they're really good. So good, I often vlog about them too. Now, here's one of my favorite exercise routines. Are you ready? Let's go! First, we need to run on the spot like this. <laughs> Great. You can run fast or you can run slowly. Whatever feels right. Just stay in the same place and move those legs. <laughs> right. Now it's time for some squats. Put your hands out, sit down, hold, and then stand up again. <laughs> and repeat. <laughs> That's great. Next, let's work on our legs with some lunges. Step forward with your right leg. Then down. Then stand back up. <laughs> Excellent. Now step forward with your left leg. Then down and back up again. Do this for one minute. Finally, relax. Close your eyes and... Breathe. Ah, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Remember, stay fit, have fun, and see you next time. Nice one, Zara. Thanks. I, uh, I have a new routine, actually. I know you're pretty fit, so... Let's give it a go. Uh, now? <laughs> yep. Step one. Run on the spot. Fast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Knees high. 
<laughs> Bye! <laughs> See you next time, guys! Hey, Matt. Which sports do you love doing? Well, I really enjoy skateboarding and windsurfing. Wow. So, do you love snowboarding too? No, I don't. I can't stand the cold. Really? Oh, I love it. How often do you have PE lessons at your school? Um, we have them twice a week. Nice one. We only have them once a week. So, what do you do in PE lessons? Right, let me see. Um, we often play football outdoors in autumn and winter. And we sometimes go swimming in the summer when it's hot. But we never do diving. Oh, and in the spring, we play tennis. So do we. And what do you and your family do to stay fit? Um, we like riding our bikes together. I've got lots of schoolwork at the moment. And my parents are always busy. But we sometimes play volleyball together on holiday. That's nice. Who do you do exercise with? Uh, I play sports with my classmates, and I sometimes do exercise with my brother. We do workouts together. Really? When do you and your brother go to the gym? Oh, we never go to the gym. We do workouts at home instead. Today, we have Raj Khan in the studio to talk to us. Raj, three of your old high school students are now Olympic volleyball players. Can you share your secret with us? How do you do it? <laughs> well, I don't think they are successful just because I'm a good PE teacher. There are many different reasons somebody becomes a top athlete. For example, a person's natural ability. It helps when you are good at something, but it isn't everything. In the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, he studies the lives of famous football players and Olympic athletes to discover why they are so good at their sport. He thinks that practice is the main reason. He says that everybody can become amazing at something if they do it for at least 10,000 hours. Hmm. But how do young athletes get this much practice? Well, many Olympians and Paralympians often start their sport when they are little children. For example, around four or five. And then they practice between five and six hours a day while they are at school, which makes a total of 20 to 30 hours training every week. Wow! So practicing a lot is important. Yes, it is important. But I think good daily routines are important too. Athletes often go to bed early and get up at the same time every day and plan all their meals. But all sports stars share one thing. They always know what they want and they don't stop even when things are difficult. That's why I tell my students, never give up. Hmm. That's a great message, Raj. Can you give us an example of a top athlete's daily routine, Raj? Sure I can. Ali Raisman is an American Olympic gymnast. She usually gets up at 6.30 a.m. Then she goes to the gym at 7. What does she do there? First, she does workouts. And then at half past eight, 
She does gymnastics. She practices for three hours. Then she has lunch. She eats at half past eleven, and after that, she always has a break from half past twelve until three p.m. Why does she have such a long break? Top athletes never train after a big meal. They need to wait for two to three hours. She often has a shower and then a snack. What does she usually eat? She usually has an orange or an apple. Then at three p.m. she goes back to the gym. What does she do then? She does workouts until five o'clock in the afternoon. Again? Yes, and then she does gymnastics all evening. Oh, I imagine she's very hungry by the end of the day. When does she have dinner? She hardly ever has dinner before half past nine. In fact, she usually eats at twenty to ten. Then she listens to relaxing music, has another shower, brushes her teeth, and always goes to bed at quarter past ten. That's a long day. Thanks, Raj. Oh, hi, Alex. I don't usually see you here. Hello, Leah. I always come here to buy an energy drink and a healthy snack, like fruit, before my workout. I prefer biscuits, Alex. <laughs> I love biscuits too, but I don't often buy them because they're high in sugar. How do you know the amount of sugar in something? I always read the traffic light labels. If a label has got a lot of green on it, it's good for you. Oh, I never look at those. So, does red mean it's bad for you? Don't eat it. No, it doesn't. It means it's okay to have some once a week, but not every day. Ah,、oh, I see. Listen, I've got this pizza in my basket. Do you think it's healthy? Let me see the label. Hmm. Sorry, Leah, but I think it's bad for you. Really? Why? What's it got in it? Well, half a pizza has got twenty-five percent of the energy you need a day. It's orange. So it's okay if you play a sport. Hmm. I don't exercise often. Is it high in sugar? No, it's low in sugar, so it's green. In fact, it's only got ten percent of the sugar you need a day. Fantastic. But it's high in salt. It's got thirty-three percent of the salt you need a day, and it's got a lot of fat. Look, half a pizza has got fifty-two percent of the fat you need a day. Wow, that's a lot of fat in one pizza. Ugh, I don't think I want to eat this pizza any more. Hello. Can we have a table for two, please? Sure. Here you are. Can we have the menu, please? Hi. Are you ready to order? Yes, we are. I'd like the avocado salad to start, please. And for your main course, can I have the all-day breakfast, please? I'm afraid we haven't got any tomatoes. Would you like two eggs instead? Yes, please. Thank you. And for you, sir? I'd like the chicken curry, followed by a fruit salad, please. Um, what type of fruit is in it? There's some apple, orange, and strawberries in it. Okay.
That's fine. Thanks. Would you like anything to drink? Yes, please. I'd like some water. The same for me, please. Of course. So that's one salad, one curry, one breakfast, a fruit salad, and two waters. Thanks. Is everything okay with your meal? Yes, thanks. Would you like any tea or coffee? No, thanks. I don't want anything else. Me neither. Can we have the bill, please? Certainly. Here you are. How much is it? Um, it's twenty-five pounds. I'd like to pay for this. Oh, thank you.